Hello everyone. Last week I was watching the movie Air, an incredible brand collaboration story of Nike and the basketball player Michael Jordan. Nike, which was undergoing financial troubles, had slow sales and was struggling to expand beyond the running shoes to other sports like basketball. This one brand collaboration changed the fortune of Nike and is now considered as one of the most iconic and influential partnerships in the history of sports, fashion and marketing. Do you know what's even more interesting? This historic collaboration happened 40 years ago on this exact date or the date I'm uploading this video. Now this got me thinking, which shoe brand in the last 5 years has pulled off something as transformative and as iconic in the sneaker world? The answer is New Balance. New Balance has become cool and fashionable in the recent years because the biggest celebrities in the world have started wearing them. But if you think it's a relatively new brand, you would be shocked to realize that New Balance is older than Skechers, Nike, Reebok, Adidas and Puma. Basically all the brands that are popular today. All this sudden craze of New Balance can be attributed to one strategic collaboration. This one strategic collaboration solved the same troubles of New Balance that Nike faced before its partnership with Michael Jordan. But as your better company, I will tell you not just about this collaboration, but also how as business students and new entrepreneurs, you can also leverage these strategies right now and build a successful brand and a profitable business. Also, Please watch this video till the end because I have a special gift for each and every one of you. So, let's discuss the RRR or Rollout, Rise and Rule of New Balance. Friends, do you know what GORP Core is? Now, understanding this Gen Z fashion buzzword is the key to understanding the love for New Balance in the market. Don't worry. I'll explain its meaning in a very, very easy language. Now, adding the suffix core to any word is a Gen Z way of saying that they are absolute or core fans of that particular fashion aesthetic. Remember like the word hardcore to show that you are strong fans of something or hardcore fans. So when the Barbie movie came out in 2022, the pink aesthetic became viral across Gen Z as well as celebrities. And this fashion trend was called Barbie core. Similar fashion trends like royal core or cottage core also gained some popularity. But one of the biggest fashion trends has been Gorp Core. Now, Gorp in Gorp Core stands for good old raisins and peanuts. Friends, raisins and peanuts are the classic snacks that hikers, mountaineers and people out for camping carry with them because they are a quick source of high energy and high protein amid their trekking. And these hikers generally refer to these mixed snacks as Gorp. So when this aesthetic of wearing puffer jackets, cargo pants, clunky shoes and beanie caps just like these hikers and mountaineers became a fashionable trend and everybody started wearing these functional outdoor apparel in an urban city setting, the Gen Z and internet were quick to name this aesthetic style as Godcore. So to sum it up, Godcore is an aesthetic style of wearing hiking and high performance gear in an urban setting. Now this Godcore trend got so popular that it eventually led to even celebrities wearing their own version of Godcore outfits. Now if you understand this Godcore better, Let's discuss the first R or the rollout of New Balance. New Balance is an American brand that was started by an Irish immigrant, William J. Riley, in 1906 as the New Balance Arch Support Company. So initially, the company only made the arch support that goes inside a footwear to provide extra padding under your feet arches to help maintain your feet in an ideal position. In short, provide the New Balance. However, New Balance made their first pair of shoes in 1938. Now, all through 1940s to 1970s, New Balance was the most popular shoe option among athletes due to its superior arch support and comfort, commitment to quality due to small-scale manufacturing, and a made-in-USA tag, boosting the brand's image and popularity during that time. However, the 1980s and 1990s were a game changer. Another American brand took the market by storm with aggressive marketing, innovative business strategies, and multiple sports partnerships. The most famous one being the Nike and the Michael Jordan collaboration. Now, at the same time, New Balance, on the other hand, decided to take the company in a completely different approach of not sponsoring any athletes and spending minimal amount of marketing budgets. In fact, they released an ad campaign called Endorsed by No One to highlight this approach and continued to rely only on these three factors to work for them. Now, it is important to understand that while they were not wrong to rely on these three factors to work for them, it was just not enough 
to compete against the aggressive marketing approach of Nike mm. as well as the other brands in the market like Adidas and Converse. Now, New Balance sailed through the years with decent business and market share. But due to minimal spending on marketing and sports and partnerships, the target market of New Balance shifted from athletes and young people to the older generation. So New Balance got around to being called Dad Shoes. But, 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 among this entire journey, one man joined New Balance and he would end up changing the fate of the company several years later. Joe Preston joined New Balance in 1995 as a senior product manager for lifestyle and running. 23 years later, Joe Preston became the CEO of New Balance in 2018. In one of his first moves, he increased the marketing budget of the company by 37%. This was complete reversal of the New Balance playbook. And what he did next was the biggest move for New Balance. In 2019, New Balance partnered with a New York-based label, Amy Leon Dore, founded by Teddy Sandis. Now, Amy Leon Dore's approach to fashion is deeply rooted in nostalgia, particularly drawing inspiration from the 1980s and 1990s New York lifestyle and creating a distinctive aesthetic style which aligned extremely well with New Balance's heritage design of shoes. This New Balance and ALD or Amy Leon Dior's partnership launched three limited editions between 2019 to 2020. The 997s, the 827s, and most importantly, the New Balance 550s. These limited editions became extremely popular among celebrities and TikTok influencers that they created a halo effect, which in this context means success of one product creates a perception of a successful brand. So everyone wanted to buy the New Balance shoes and the limited edition ones increased the sale of these regular 997, 827 and 550 models that sold at one third the price of these original limited edition shoes. Hence, the rollout of New Balance and Amy Leon Dior's collaboration led to a massive surge in the sale of New Balance shoes and led to a 20.5% year-on-year -year sales growth. Now, if you understood how the rollout of New Balance and ALD collection shot up the sales of shoes, let's talk about the rise of the Godcore trend. You already know that a Godcore aesthetic mostly consists of puffer jackets, cargo pants, clunky shoes, and beanie caps. Let's focus on the clunky shoes. With the rise of style trendsetters like Hailey Bieber, Emily Ratajkowski, Ryan Reynolds, and even Taylor Swift adhering to the Godcore aesthetic, and choosing the swanky New Balance shoes to match with their latest outfits, the rise in sales and brand value of New Balance increased exponentially. New Balance went from an underdog and a favorite brand of the dads across America to a $5 billion brand in 2023. Lastly, the rule of New Balance. While the love of Gen Z and a fashion trend may fizzle out eventually, the rule of New Balance has just begun and will only increase from here. And that is due to its three original reasons from 50 years ago, which is superior arch support and comfort, commitment to quality, and a made in USA tag. As well as this fourth and most important reason added by the current CEO, Joe Preston, strategic marketing choices. Friends, this is how the rollout of New Balance and AMD partnership, the rise of Godcore aesthetic, over a hundred years of legacy in making the highest quality of shoes, as well as the strategic shift in the marketing led to the preposterous growth of New Balance in the last five years. Now, before we move on to the business lessons, I want to share a special gift with each and every one of you. As your better company, I have added the presentation that you see during this video in the description below. You can save it for your self-study or even refer back to it as you develop your own understanding and ideas. Now moving on to the business lessons. First, if you want to build a brand in 2024, you have to focus on brand collaborations that are authentic and align as closely as possible with your brand's mission. When Tim Hortons, the largest coffee chain in Canada, wanted to connect more with the youth of the country, they brought in Justin Bieber as their brand ambassador and even launched a product, Tim Beeps, around this collaboration. Now, as much as this collaboration was because of the virality of Justin Bieber's music, the success of the collaboration can be attributed to the fact that Justin is born and brought up in Canada and has endorsed Tim Hortons as his favorite coffee long before he was ever brought on board as a brand ambassador. A well-aligned partnership can give you access to new markets boost your brand's credibility and even drive exponential growth. To know more about Tim Hortons in Canada, watch this video. Second, adapt to the external changes in the market. Now, while New Balance failed to realize the importance of sports collaborations in the 1980s and lost a significant market share to Nike, the turnaround of marketing strategies in 2019 
boosted the sales revenue and brand value of New Balance. So if you are starting a brand in 2024, try to leverage upon where does your product or service fit in the market from an external point of view and adapt your marketing strategies accordingly. Third, unlocking a halo effect in 2024 is like finding a pot of gold in your own backyard. This means that one great marketing strategy will exponentially increase the growth of your product and your brand. Now, it is important to understand that the quality of your product or service plays an equally important role. But unlocking the halo effect is what you should strive for as a brand in 2024. Now, just like you, one successful video will help this channel reach to 10 times or say even 100 times more people. So please like the video, share it with your friends and please hit the subscribe button for many more interesting business case studies. Thank you so much.